As always, if you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. We could begin the solution to this problem by drawing a picture of this car as it's trying to negotiate the circular turn. So here we've drawn a sort of front-on view of the tire and we put a little arrow here just to suggest that the car is traveling around the circle in this direction. And what we could do next is draw the forces that are acting on the wheel of the car. We have the gravitational force which is acting downward on the car. And we can label that force mg. We also have the surface of the road pushing up on the wheel of the car. And that is known as the normal force. So we can draw a vector pointing straight up and label that fn. But then because the car is moving in a circle, there must be a force that's keeping the car moving along that circular path. And that force is usually referred to as the centripetal force, and it points towards the center of the circle. So we need to draw a third force vector pointing towards the center of the circle. And we could label that force Fc for centripetal force. But we would then have to ask ourselves what is actually supplying that centripetal force. In some problems, it's gravity that's creating a centripetal force. In other problems, it's tension present in a string. And then still in other problems, it's a force of friction. And it turns out that in this problem, it is the force of static friction that is keeping this tire moving in the circular path. In other words, the centripetal force is the force of static friction, which we can label Fs. Now we know that Fs is equal to a coefficient of static friction multiplied by a normal force. If we look at our free body diagram, we can see that the normal force, which points straight up, must be equal in magnitude to the gravitational force, which points straight down. How do we know that the normal force is equal in magnitude to the gravitational force? Because the wheel is not accelerating in the vertical direction. That means that any upward forces must cancel the downward forces. So we can actually replace Fn with the gravitational force Mg. And that way, our centripetal force overall becomes the coefficient times mg. Now because the tire is moving in a circular path, we know according to Newton's second law that the centripetal force is going to equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration. Now we just determined that the centripetal force is the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the gravitational force. We also know that the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared divided by the radius. If we study this equation carefully, we can see that the mass appears on both sides, so we can divide both sides of the equation by the mass and effectively cancel it out. Now going back to the question, we're trying to figure out the maximum speed, so we're trying to solve this equation for the speed v. In order to do that, we can multiply both sides of this equation by the radius r, so that it cancels out on the right-hand side, and then we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation so that we can isolate the speed v. Now that we've isolated the speed, we can go ahead and plug in the known value for the radius, which is 25 meters. The coefficient of static friction is 0.23, and then gravity, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And after plugging in and simplifying, we can see that the maximum speed is approximately 7.51 meters per second. And so this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please click that thumbs up icon and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for other videos. You can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll post an answer to it on YouTube.